So this is going to be the first episode in a series where I actually go through the most impactful round in a matchup, right? So this is going to be Endpoint versus VP, and this is round 22, and I feel like this round is key because of a few reasons. So I'm going to go ahead and pause it right here. So when we look at the scoreboard, it was a 10-5 half in favour of VP. Endpoint lost the pistol, but then ecoed them back, won 3 on the spin, and then lost one round, and then won it back. So this is now in round 22 here, where we see that VP hadn't, well, they didn't really have great cash, so they actually called a timeout. They had to talk through what they were going to do. And typically out of a timeout, we often see teams come through with very aggressive plays or set plays from the get-go. And this round wasn't different, okay? So we're gonna watch for a few seconds here. So we're gonna see Crucial actually go for a pick down middle. And Max is right behind him, ready to support if need be. So P Crucial sees one player jump out to the side here. He sees one player jump after peeking all the way down. James is going to be throwing a smoke immediately, I believe, which will should land towards over, you know, towards the mini pit area. Buster should smoke towards Arch. Then there'll be flashes to take top mid. They're going to go up towards short, and this is just a quick burst that they're planning. However, it doesn't quite play through like that because there is disruptions along the way. So the smoke lands towards both sides, and Max is going to Molotov beneath my POV here. He's going to Molotov the short push, and he will separate the squad coming through for them. Because of that Molotov, he tags players going through, does good damage, but as you can see in the top right, Jane gets the trade on it and actually takes a lot of territory, but before doing it, he throws the bomb behind him, meaning even if he dies, it's not the worst possible situation. He understands, okay, I'm going to take a risk, you guys keep the bomb, we'll see how this goes, we're on a force by here. And he does that, which is great, right? So Surreal gets a kill towards the corner site, which was actually saving Crucial as he just missed a single shot. And then I'm going to go ahead and actually pause it right here on the minimap. So the key things are that we've had Flamesy and Robin push down Banana. They've even heard a player towards Quad slash towards Boiler. And then they are going to have to try and see if they can cut this area in half and then make sure that players stay in here. But they do not know how many players are stuck in the apartments, right? Because as we, as the spectator, we know James is already in CT spawn. And he's going to be expecting a player to be in CT spawn, whether it's in Speedway, or behind the well, or, you know, Ruins entrance, tree, anywhere waiting for him to come lurking through, where they can catch him off guard, get the kill, and then be able to call, okay, there was only one player CT. However, that's not quite how this round plays out. Like, from the CT perspective, you've already over-rotated hard down Banana. You've not seen anybody. They don't have control of Arch. It means that they could easily go through CT. You don't know how many people went there, as I said. But we're going to let this one play through. I'm just going to keep it on the minimap for a bit here. Because there's two different POVs to consider. Because we have James clearing everything on his way towards B. We have Kicker going through T apps. And unfortunately we have Robin and Flamesy knowing, well, we've not had much contact on the way through here. We probably need to consider that they might have gone through CT spawn to B. And now there is that awful situation where, of course, the spectator will think... Wow, Endpoint, why do they not know or there's something silly like that? But that's just not the case, right? The case that it was actually at hand is Max got traded here. They killed one player trying to push onto the bomb site. You only know that one player might have jumped through the smoke off of Max's actual POV from his death point. But otherwise, you have no idea. You have no information other than the one player in apps. So from this perspective here, you either need to make a decision of holding banana and fighting this way, and then playing retake fully with a one-man advantage. Or you then need to see if you can retake the bomb site yourself, and make sure you then play basically a late round scenario, where you probably don't have a rotate, but you could be flanked from CT, or also banana. Which is obviously worst case scenario. But instead, Endpoint decides to go for a bit of an interesting one, where I actually thought Robin might have timed this, where he got into the cubby, and was going to stay there. But this position is so dodgy, like I mentioned this in my post-plant video, where you can see the player way before they can see you. So from Robin's POV, he can see up to about this, the half of the left-hand door there. But if I go then my free view, I can look way out and I can see him already. And unfortunately, he actually has a peak and times it, unfortunately, you know, the wrong timing. James gets the kill, he then gets the second kill. And this means that Endpoint basically have lost this round 100%. Flamesy wasn't able to get the trade. Which, you know, that happens sometimes to Naked versus an M4, sometimes this happens. But the ultimate thing is how 
I, I, I always say people are unfortunate, but CS is, I mean, it tends to be a pretty unfortunate game where small decisions or small things that happen can decide rounds, which then, you know, they can decide the game ultimately. Because we now look at the money that's on the endpoint side. You've got no loss bonus, so th these players are going to be on about three, uh, yeah, three point one k for them too, and then three point three there. You've got an open and M4. You can drop some guns across, but you need utility. This is Inferno, and with an open and AK in play, you kind of want to buy around it because those are two very, very powerful weapons. At endpoint, they decide to actually support the buy, and with that, they end up losing this game sixteen to nine. So you then think of like the alternative world where they win that round, where the players, they kill Jame, they then hold the back banana, it's a 4v2, they probably win the round with, let's say, two casualties to be, you know, be fair to the consideration that VP probably takes some players out on the way in. It then goes 12 to 10, VP probably eco then as well, it goes 12 to 11, and then point are very in the game then. But unfortunately for them, that's just not how this one goes, and unfortunately for them, they end up losing this game, and... In turn, they end up going to overpass, and they made that one a hell of a fight as well. But their first game of Pro League was a good performance overall, and I'm glad we saw the potential coming out of them along the way as well. I'm looking forward to seeing them actually progress with these games, because these games are against the world's best, and it's really good to see Endpoint actually up at this level now. But this is going to be, you know, this, as I said, this is the first episode of a series where this, or where I go through rounds like this, where they mean more than your average round. And ultimately this round went the way of VP.